We have so much strength in our hair. It's part of our identity. You know, you pull that identity away from us, it's kind of like you're pulling that strength, you know, from us. We have to take our power back. Let's start with our hair. Black hair symbolizes to me joy, makes me feel that I can walk with my head high and be me. Most importantly, freedom. Freedom to be me. I'm a loctician. I am from the Caribbean, the islands of Trinidad and Tobago. I have always had a passion and talent for doing natural hair. I built my clientele off of having, practicing on my daughter's hair. I've been doing hair, actually braiding hair, since I was 10 years old. Um, by the time I was 14, I was able to do hair in the staircase during lunchtime. Uh, $10 straight backs and $15 for designs. That was huge for me back then, you know? I found it to be very therapeutic for me. Braids have such a historical and a traditional energy to it. I'm a third generation hairstylist. I grew up with my grandparents. My grandmother Mary was a hairstylist. When I was 13, my grandmother started to buy me my own hair supplies, including weave and stuff like that, so that I can do my own hair, because I just wanted to do my hair like Diana Ross. As a fourth generation hairstylist, I grew up in the salon. That's pretty much where my love for hair began. It's where I was able to see creations happen on a daily basis. And I wanted to be a part of that so badly because I saw so many women and men in the salon being happy and expressing themselves through hair. There's just something about the African culture and bringing it here to America. It's a connection that's in our DNA, you know? And it has so much power to it. So why not, you know, bring that power into design, but also into a lifestyle? Shake it, locks up. Let me see the shake it. Let me see the volume of it. Nice, good, good, good. Looking good. Right, that's it. It's alive. It's looking good. People associate dreadlocks with the Caribbean. One particular reason I think is most likely Bob Marley, because Bob Marley, being as popular as he was with his music, and people loved the way that he performed, and they love his hairstyle. There are different types of dreadlocks. Some people like the free formers as just, you know, they do their own thing that lock up on its own. You also have the two strand twists. You have four locks, which is a temporary type of locks for the person who doesn't want to actually go through the journey. Then you have lock extensions. Lock extensions are more permanent though. When you do that, it takes a couple of hours well to be done, but the person can keep it in and get the styles that they want instantly. You can go from short to long, right away. I'm specializing in wig making, wig coloring, um, wig styling. It's something that's still fresh and new to the hair industry. And a lot of people just want a part of it. Like, it's, it also allows so many women to have different hairstyles without affecting their own natural hair. I became interested in styling wigs because I fell in love with color in beauty school and I saw an opportunity that I would be able to color hair to extreme colors and do extreme colors without chemically processing someone's hair. Wigs were not considered a good thing, but that has changed so much because of our ability to now make them look so natural. Now, I think it's almost like a status thing, you know what I mean? Like, if you don't have a lace front girl, like, who are you even? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> The difference between a weave is most times a weave, there is some part of your natural hair out, maybe the crown, your edges. A wig is completely covered. The most popular right now are voluminous styles like body waves and curls. You know, people are loving texture. You know, curls, big body wave, things like that. These things that are easy to maintain. And of course the silk press, whether it's a wig or your natural hair. Uh, it's actually one of the easiest styles to maintain. When my clients come in to have their hair styled, they're often influenced by like Ciara, Normani, Beyonce, of course. Oh, Gabrielle Union. When clients come to me, the styles that they really want to replicate is like the Rihanna braids, you know? They want box braids, and in that category would be like knotless braids as well. They want Marley twists. 
tribal cornrows, uh, which the Fulani cornrows fall into that category. Crochet, crochet faux locks or crochet uh, box braids, and braided updo. These traditional hairstyles, their meanings in Africa are different from the meanings here. We rock them for style. You know, they rock them because, you know, they're differentiating their tribes from one another. As soon as Black Panther came out, my phone was ringing like crazy. And most of the people who came in, actually all of them that came in, the young guys especially, they came in for that hairstyle. I think the actor's name was Michael B. Jordan. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> you know what pepper sauce is? Hot pepper sauce, hot. <laughs> You're hot like pepper sauce. I started styling Ava DuVernay hair. She was looking for a hairstylist in New York City. And then at the end of the service, she said, I would like you to be my hairstylist. Then I said, sure, I will. I am usually quite baffled when I see how society perceives African hairstyles on anyone other than a person of color. You're wearing a history. So we should always be given as due credit because of the history and experiences that come with the hair, the braid styles. You can't get away from that. That is our culture. When I see people of non-African descent rocking um, cornrows, I want to have a conversation with that person. And I want to ask them, what made you want to do this hairstyle, right? And do you know the history of the hairstyle? Do you know the significance of braids? Braids is more than just a style. It's a culture, it's an identity. It's bringing us closer together, actually. If you go back to slavery, that's how we upkept our hair. Our coils signify a strong foundation. The days of slavery, when the mothers were separated from the children, they were actually able to place grains of rice into a section of the child's hair. They were able to take that grain of rice and plant it somewhere. They were able to eat it, you know? But they were able to survive because of their hair. Do you know how powerful that is? When I saw the video of the wrestler that his hair was cut, it broke my heart. Because being a loctician, I know the journey it takes for you to even get to a certain point. And then to just have your locks cut off in seconds and be humiliated. When you look different from another person, not everyone could embrace that. I think the Crown Act that Cory Booker wants to pass to prevent the discrimination of blacks wearing their natural hair in the workplace is a step in the right direction. This bill is super important to us as a people, and I think that this is gonna open a gateway for us because for a really long time, our livelihood depended on our appearance, and our appearance was used to exclude us from the pursuit of happiness. We have this whole thing with discrimination of hair in a workplace, in a school environment. A young girl who's 10 years old can't go to school with her afro or with braids. The fact that we're here in America and we're being discriminated because of our braids and it's looked at as not being neat, it's looked at as we're not able to express ourselves. That's just what we do as black folks. Whether it's the length, whether it's the width, whether it's the color, whether it's the shape or the, the, the design, this is just who we are and we just want to be accepted. The black hair salon for the black community is everything of importance from hair care and maintenance to education in every aspect from financial literacy, health, family, issues, religion, spirituality. We talk about everything in the salon. We're talking about politics, we're talking about the new fashion, um, we're talking about celebrities, you know, we're talking about our personal info. The goal is always for people to leave here and feel good and especially better than when they came in. Being able to transform another person, when they get off your chair, they can just hug you and say thank you. Thank you for not only doing my hair, but thank you for making me feel better about myself. It's a rewarding feeling, especially when you love what you do. For me, it symbolizes everything to do with my ancestors and my culture, descendant of slaves, kings and queens, you know? Freedom, 
you know, beauty, um, integrity, strength, truth, awesomeness, you know, delicious. You know, you see a black woman walking down the street with her afro, what do you think? You stop, you look, I stop and look like, damn girl. You know, very positive energy. You know what I'm saying? Chakras all in order, you know, energies glowing and glistening. That's what, you know, black hair is for me.